How do you get your first job as a programmer? Let's talk about that. So I want to tell you two simple things that you can spend your time on. And I want to tell you two simple things that you can do in order to operationalize the things that you're spending your time on into a portfolio. Of course, it's one of these chicken and egg problems where you have to get the experience in order to be able to get the job, but you have to get the job in order to be able to get the experience. So the first job is always tricky. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I've been spending most of my recent years in academia. I did a bachelor's, did a master's, now doing a PhD, and I've used to work as a teacher in university. So in order to reestablish my credibility when we're talking about jobs in industry, let me just mention that before I went into academia, before I started to do my bachelor's program and then stayed in academia, I used to work at an advertising agency campaign websites and essentially short-lived websites for clients and of course that wasn't actually my first job but that was sort of in my mind my sort of first real job where I actually got paid for doing something that I sort of enjoyed actually doing and it is my uttermost belief that I got that job because I had a portfolio because I had something to show that I'm a guy who doesn't just talk the talk, but who actually walks the walk. The person employing you wants to know that you're not just a person who talks about software development, but actually knows how to develop software. And that applies equally, regardless of whether you have some kind of university or vocational education, or whether you're a self-taught programmer. In both cases, think about this, in both cases, you're fighting on the market where people have, for example, vocational and university education. So even if you have an education, you're still applying for jobs that other people also have the education education are applying. So you got to find some kind of differentiating factor. You got to find a way to stand out of the crowd. And I'm not saying that to sort of scare you and make you make you feel like you got to do some crazy outrageous stuff in order to just get a first job. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying that a little little bit goes a very very long way. Now, my first job at the advertising agency, I wouldn't say that I was a good developer then, right? I would hardly say that I'm a good developer now, but Definitely, I was a very, very novice developer. But here's the key point. I was good enough to be employable. I was good enough to be employable. I was good enough for somebody to pay me and I wasn't paid poorly. I mean, programmers are paid well. So I was good enough to be employed. So if you have some programming skills, have belief in yourself, have belief in the fact that you are employable. As soon as you know a little bit, as soon as you are able to build some kind of stuff, you are usually employable. So keep that in mind. Don't bog yourself down. But the key point is this. How do we show that we are employable? How do we show the employer that we are not just the talk, but we are also the action? How do we show that we walk the walk? This is why we're going to talk about portfolios. So I want to tell you two simple things that you can spend your time on. And I want to tell you two simple things that you can do in order to operationalize the things that you're spending your time on into a portfolio. Before we get into it, of course, remember that when we're talking about applying for the job, step one is of course that you've got to apply for the job. The law of big numbers or whichever way you want to think about it, the more jobs you apply for, the greater your chance to actually get one of these jobs with some diminishing returns, of course. But generally, you got to apply for the jobs. It doesn't matter if you just look at tons of jobs. You got to actually apply for the jobs, right? That's what actually gives you the chance to get the job. You can you can't win the lottery if you don't have a ticket, period. Moving on. The two concrete things I think you could spend your time on now that you're looking for a job is one, to build a big application, to build some kind of product, to build some kind of service, or two, to build multiple small applications. That's simple, eh? Here's the key point. The one thing, the one thing I think we programmers can do to disproportionately increase our value as a programmer, to disproportionately increase our skill set, right? To make us crazy much better is to actually write code. There are tons of other stuff we can do. We can read books, we can watch videos, we can take courses, we can read tutorials, etc., etc., etc. None of these things are as good as writing code. Day in, day out, hammering out that code. Even if you're doing bad practices, I, I would argue that even if you're learning yourself some bad habits, when then in the future somebody tells you about things such as design principles or design patterns or anti-patterns or things like this, you will have a framework, you'll have a reference for thinking, ah, that's why that was so painful. Somebody tells you that there's a design rule called something something and it says, don't do this. And you're like, but I've been doing that all the time and now I can see why that's very costly. You have some kind of reference. You have something to, to fall back on. 
But of course, there's always the balance. You, you need both sides. Of course, you need to keep writing code, but you also need to sometimes sharpen the saw, right? Metaphorically, if you're using a saw day in and day out, at some point, the, the saw is going to go blunt. So you have to stop and sharpen the saw. That would be reading a book or taking a course or going to university, etc., etc. But the one thing that we can't forget is to keep writing code. So that's why the two tips are essentially start working on a product or start working on multiple products. And here's how I want you to think about this. Firstly, it doesn't matter if these are bad. The point is that you got to do something. You got to do something that you believe in. Of course, it's much better if it actually has value for other people. But here's how I want you to think about publishing this. You want to build a portfolio and you don't want to wait 10 years to get your portfolio out. You want to have your portfolio now, but you want to also keep your portfolio up to date. So either I think you should think about your portfolio as build something and then deliver idea number one or idea number two, document the process. So I'm a big fan of the great entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm linking to him in the description. And I think he has a very profound point when he says, document, don't create. So he's saying, of course, you can create new content and that has and, and that new content can have massive value for people. But he's also saying, if you document the process, if you document the journey of you endeavoring into something that may also have massive value for lots of people. And if you think about that in the portfolio context, that puts that in a totally different light. You don't have to deliver the final product. You can document the process. Here's why this is valuable. Rationally, think about it. If I'm an employer and I'm about to employ you and I can see that you have some kind of portfolio where you're reasoning about your journey, you have some kind of hard evidence where you're showing me that here's the things, here's what I've been spending my time on over the last 10 months. And here are some great things that I've been figuring out. And the point here is that it doesn't matter if th these are things that, pe that people know. It doesn't matter if, if, if you're discovering design patterns or if you're discovering the, the very basic design rules or like the solid principles, even, even though we're discovering it, 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 it's stupid. It does, yeah, what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't even matter if like you one day read about a single responsibility principle and, and then you talk about in a blog post or something like this or in, in some kind of article about why you, the code you wrote the other day was breaking single responsibility principle. If I was an employer and I would see that you do that, I would say, oh my God, this is this person really reflects. This, this person really thinks about the way he or she is writing programs. And also this person is really trying to learn. This person is actively engaging, met, reflecting over the process and reflecting over the things that, that he or she is doing and, and tries to become a better person. It becomes a be it tries to become a better programmer, even, even a better person, right? Massive value, massive. Of course, at the end of the day, delivery matters, of course. But you're applying for a company, right? You're, you're applying not to stay one day, you're applying to stay for at least some time. So they have some time to get you up to speed, but seeing that you are willing to learn and willing to spend time on becoming better, massively valuable. So start working on one single project and document the journey, or start working on multiple projects and document the journey. And I should be more clear, when I say multiple projects, I mean as in these kind of, there are, there are tons of things if you, if you Google for it, like one app a day, right? I mean, that kind of, it's kind of when we're saying one or many, it's like we're saying either go for quality or go for quantity. Go for building a single thing over a long period of time or go for quantity to mash out tons and tons of things to be able to expose yourself to multiple different scenarios. I have no idea which one of these are better. I would say that both are probably superb, but I would like to warn you against doing a single project, but not uh, delivering incrementally. If you're doing a single project, I would really urge you to look into Scrum and continuous delivery and lean startup, etc., etc. In other words, the point is, if you're not documenting the journey, if what you're building your portfolio around is not documenting what you learn day in and day out, but instead your portfolio is rather about the actual products that you're creating, the things that you're actually delivering, if that's your strategy, be very sure to not wait until the end. You gotta deliver incrementally. Otherwise, you might end up in a scenario where you're building a single product over a period of like three years, and then in the end, maybe it turns out you find out that your idea was really bad and you don't even want to deliver it. You gotta get your portfolio up 
as soon as humanly possible. Get something up, showcase it, and then iterate and iterate and iterate and make it better. Don't worry about perfection. So I thought about starting this YouTube channel for a very long time. And then one day I just came to the conclusion that I'm probably never gonna do this unless I just get rid of the idea that it has to be perfect. And I just said, okay, never mind. I'm just gonna do one video as if I'm gonna do tons of them and pretend that it's as natural as anything. I forgot my microphone and the sound quality was bad, but I just did it and it turned out okay. And then I repeated the same thing the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And I mean, in my humble opinion, eventually it got better. So think of that saying, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. I mean, it's silly, but it's really what it's all about. And if you wanna get that job, make sure that you start and make sure that you show people when you're applying for jobs that you've started. Make sure that you have something actionable and tangible and crunchy that they can look at and say, ah, this is actually a person who's walking the walk and who's not only talking the talk. Thanks for watching. I wish you the best of luck. If you have any more tips for people applying for their first programming job, please do shoot those in the comments. It's superb when we can help each other. Remember to subscribe for more coding videos and I'll see you in the next one.